All right, our camera is caught up with Joseph Cassano today, the former head of AIG's financial products unit. Now, he had lived in London, but he's now back in the U.S. at his home in Connecticut. The 54 year old Cassano, who is being investigated by the FBI and other agencies, says he's actually been back for a while. I've been back in the country for a long time. How long have you been back? Uh, we've been back since the middle of the summer. You know, I really can't comment on AIG right now, and you can understand that. Right. And you can understand why I really can't make any comments. Federal prosecutors say Cassano's unit took too much risk and was the reason AIG came close to collapsing, and the government had to step in uh, and bail it out to the tune of $183 billion. For more on the implications of Cassano's return to the U.S., we bring in now Columbia University Securities Law Professor John Coffey. Professor Coffey, thanks for joining us. Let me start by asking you what it means that uh, Cassano has been back really since the middle of the summer. I mean, how important is that when a lot of people thought that he may have been staying over in Europe? I don't think it means much at all because he was easily subject to extradition if the Department of Justice does decide that they can make a criminal case. Remember that after Enron, the U.S. government managed to extradite to Houston, Texas, a series of Scottish and British investment bankers who were British citizens. This is an American citizen. There is no reason to believe that there would be difficulty in extraditing him. So there's an active investigation, and we can't say at this stage where it will go. We can just describe what the government is looking for. Well, the Department of Justice is probing whether Castano misled investors and auditors about the safety of credit default swaps. He said, actually, in December of 2007, it's difficult to see how you can make a loss on these kind of products, although the company came up with losses of more than $100 billion over the following six quarters. Is it likely that uh, someone, someone is charged in this case, and do you think Castano would be uh, one of the people that we'd look at? Well, let me say what would be the typical charge here. The Sarbanes-Oxley Act made it a crime after the experience of Enron and WorldCom to mislead the public auditor of a publicly held company. Now, the great issue around AIG was whether or not there should have been greater reserves for the enormous credit default swaps that AIG was issuing as a dealer. Uh, there is, there's an argument, and the government is clearly pursuing the theory that uh, Mr. Cassano or others at AIG Financial Products hid material facts from the auditor, which was Price Waterhouse, as to whether there was enough liability and enough risk that they would have required reserves to be booked, which would have been very costly but might have prevented the financial collapse. And there's at least one disgruntled employee of AIG who is telling regulators and the Department of Justice that he was excluded from the internal audit process because there was a feeling on Mr. Cassano's part that he would uh, distort the process and tell the wrong things to the accountants. I don't say that that testimony is going to be credited. It's just that there is a basis here for investigating further whether or not material facts were he withheld from the auditor, and that would be the first time that there would be a criminal prosecution under this special provision of Sarbanes-Oxley. All right, Professor Coffey, thanks very much for joining us. Columbia University Securities Law Professor John Coffey.